one can't legislate the hearts of man. You can't legislate the opinions of man. Racism in America, unfortunately, it's something that I think will always be there. Racism is there, staring you in the face, and I am not sure if there's any way around it or out of it or anything that will fix it. And this is the reason why we left. All right, my name is Tayo Sholagbadi. I'm the owner of discoverkotono.com. The title of this video is Repatriating to Africa. A three-pronged strategy you can use to succeed. But I want to share with you in this message as some ideas for people who are, who are black-skinned people in any part of the world outside Africa who are looking to repatriate back to Africa uh, with a view to uh, settling down and living the life of their dreams. My target audience for this video are people who fit, who have, who are going to fit into the four assumptions I'm going to explain now or outline. The first assumption I'm going to be making is that you are a competent person you have something you do for a living that you are very good at. You have, a, in other words, you have some expertise in a certain field, and you have attained a level of mastery in that field that um, enables you to generate income on a reliable and repeatable basis for the long term. So you're competent, and it is an expertise that you are confident that you can take and go to another environment and apply uh, with necessary adaptations to succeed. The second assumption I'm going to make is that you are not going to be coming to the African country you are going to choose to look for paid employment. You're not going to be doing that. Instead, you're going to be looking to start a business and possibly also create job opportunities for other people. And that will be more in line with what other people from other parts of the world, like Asia and Europe, do. Most of the time, when people from Europe and Asia and America particularly the white-skinned people, when they come into the African continent, most times, whatever country they go in, they usually come with a business idea and they end up employing the locals. So I hope that I will expect and I'm assuming that that's what you're going to be coming to do. And in other words, you'll not be coming looking for paid employment and applying for jobs and job hunting. The third assumption I'm going to make is that you are a woke person. You are a very uh, conscious black person. You are clear of your identity as a black person. You are confident and proud of your history you know the history of the black race you know what the contributions of the people of the nile valley the black africans who were the original inhabitants of ancient egypt what their contributions were and you are quite clear in your mind about who you are so nobody can brainwash you the fourth and final assumption i'm making is that you are the kind of person if and when you do encounter somebody that demonstrates a um, lack of consciousness that you believe is not healthy, that you know does not benefit the black race, you are willing to unapologetically, all right, but respectfully call out such behavior and offer to inform, educate, and empower such persons so that they can desist from behaving in that manner in future. And also probably take what you tell them and share with others so that more and more black people around the society will be empowered. Those are the first four assumptions I'm going to make about whoever it is you are that's watching this video. Now I'm going to go now into the main message I have to give to you and describe to you the strategy I recommend strongly that you adopt in implementing your plan to move back, move into Africa, whatever country you choose to, to settle in Africa and live and begin to live your new life. Right? I hope you find it useful. I'm going to use these slides. I'm not a person that I enjoy staying in front of the camera too much so but to do the opening to this video i felt it would be appropriate to do that but what you're going to see next are going to be slideshows in which you see a lot of what i'm saying and also some visuals to go with what i'm saying like illustrations and video clips all right i found it, i hope you find it useful you can always reach out to me uh, using the information provided at the end of the video for about 
two years off and on. Now this year I've decided to stay permanently. So I chose it to be here because the cost of living is uh, much more maintainable and um, I don't feel like I'm in danger anymore. I, I, Things that I have I, to be worried up. about, but I don't feel like a target. I don't feel like someone wants to take my life or wants to control my life just because of my color. If I have a choice in the matter, no, I would not move back there. Um, there are 54 different countries in Africa, I think it's 55 actually. So I can choose a different country if need be, but there is no reason for me to have to go back to America to face what I have dealt with my, my final entire thoughts life. about living here in Uganda is that there's no problem or no struggle that people here can't overcome. So if we all just work together and each one teach one and we all help each other out, I believe that we can build a, a much better community with Africans who are coming from abroad and Africans who are here America on the continent. America is not in reality the way it has been presented to most of the world. And now I think most of the world is beginning to see that. If you're from the continent and you want to go to America, I feel like you should probably rethink that and think about rebuilding what you have here because what you have here is so much more beautiful and magnificent than what you could ever find somewhere else. I've been to so many different parts of this world and there is nothing like Africa.